Football is a military game. You're trying to take the whole territory away from the other guy. The football's a marker. How much territory do you have? And you're on the attack. And if you do succeed in capturing the whole thing, we call that a touchdown. You get points. And then you do it again. No. A game like football just really spoke to me from the first time I saw it. I thought, wow, you know, uh, wouldn't it be cool if you could actually call the plays and choose the players and manage your own team and feel like you're an owner of a team? Wouldn't that be neat? I gave some thought to becoming a football coach, and I decided that I had a, a bigger idea and a bigger plan that, that ultimately had to do with uh, helping build the video game industry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to John Madden Football. If you're in our football world, heck, if you're in the culture of the United States, you know about Madden. Putting football into a video game that allows you to like live that fantasy of playing in the NFL, and I think that's really what brings fans into the game and connects them with the sport. I grew up in the golden age of television. And one of the things that was on in those days were team sports. And it, it was love at first sight for me, just seeing what football was about and thinking, yeah, dang, um, I, want to, I want to be involved in that game. I had already made a tabletop football game. I did that when I was a teenager. And it was with cards and charts and dice. And then I started thinking, well, wait a minute. I've heard of these things called computers. Why can't we take all of this complication that, you know, that's kind of annoying and put it inside the box and put some pretty pictures on the screen like television. Wouldn't it be then not just as engaging as television, but way more powerful because you're the one who's calling the shots and doing things and getting the feedback about it and making your moves. If you remember your earliest memories of video games, they're very blocky and very simplistic and they might be claiming they're representing something, but you have to use a lot of imagination. There were more arcade-style football products, but they weren't real football. We had a terrible football game on the Atari 2600 that uh, you really could only run like two plays and it didn't matter. I mean, that was bare-boned and it was hardly anything, but I remember how excited I was I would eat dinner, I would do my homework, and then I could go play. And it was like a three on three, and it was uh, really, really bad. But it was better than playing the vibrate football game. You just sit there and watch these you know, players. It made no sense. You had little plastic football players with these little platforms, and you just hit the button and go Wah! and they would just start moving around. And they'd, they'd all just spill over the edge, whatever, I got a first down. The first one that I remember having was a little handheld, little dot game, Mattel Electronic Football or something. I think it had the little red dashes that represented football players. If you had one, the whole game was a running game. You would try to like move it up and down on this little grid and there was like four other red dashes that were the tacklers. And you had to do two quick jumps up and then you could just keep going, going, going and make a long touchdown run. Tech Mobile took it to a whole different level. Everybody played Tech Mobile. If you didn't, you're dead to me. You're all dead to me. Sit face down, hut, 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 hut. I cannot calculate the amount of times I played with Bo Jackson in Tecmo Super Bowl. Bo Jackson was the, uh, the cheat code, just running to the outside. There's a video on YouTube of someone killing the entire five minutes and a quarter just running Bo Jackson in circles as guys slide to miss and tackle him on Tecmo Super Bowl. There were all kinds of different approaches. There were some entertaining uh, things you could play around with, but they weren't, they weren't real football. All the time I'm thinking, I can make a better game than this. It's gotta be the real thing, and it's gotta have the real players in it. You've gotta have accurate teams, and all of the attributes of the players have to be represented. And I had to have a pretty good idea about what kind of company Electronic Arts would be. But for me personally, it was going to be a vehicle to, to make a better football game. EA was very interesting. Trip was kind of this amazing guy that had all kinds of uh, very unconventional but well thought out.
strategies and ideas, and he had been working on Madden for a while. I mean, he had the vision and the courage and the dedication to do it, and it wasn't a question of, are we going to finish this? It was a question of, what do we do next? How do we get there? Hey, you want big time football? The hits, the boom, the doink, the whap, it's all here. This is my game. The uh, choice of Madden, uh, this is kind of uh, interesting story because when I started Electronic Arts, I realized that it's going to be very difficult to do a full team sport 11 on 11. It's a lot of graphics to move around. And it's a really complicated, sophisticated team sport. And I thought, you know, um, I could probably use some help from a, a, a NFL coach to just help me get a lot of the details right. Get ready for Madden. And Madden just instantly popped up. He'd already retired as an NFL coach, and he has one of the best winning percentages ever. But then he'd become an Emmy award-winning broadcaster. He'd published some books. He was also the Ace Hardware Man. I mean, he, he was out there. I mean, he, he was a really prominent brand that he created, that it was a persona. You know, like the goofy, funny, you know, bam, boom. Boom, we cross him. The left goes to the right, the right goes to the left. This guy crosses here. He, he was able to package that and put it everywhere. He made the sport more approachable. John was really charming and informative and generous with his time. And I had like a 50 page design document where I was just going through a series of questions and showing him things. We all wanted to do 11 on 11. I was nervous about the technical feasibility. And I thought, well, you know, uh, we, we could start out just doing seven on seven, doing skeleton. And then he just uh, put a pin in it immediately. <laughs> and, you know, we're, we're all going, yeah, yeah, that's a good decision. Yeah, we want real football. You know, we, 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 because we all did. John Madden insisted it be 11. That was one of John Madden's major contributions in this, was to insist that, that it be real. He didn't want it to be a kind of a fake football game. And Tripp totally went with that. I think the game of Madden has been really true to the notion of teaching football. The depth of technology built up over the years, you know, microprocessors, graphics engines, unimaginable changes in technology. It's let us generate near photorealistic images of players and physics movements to the point where, you know, 30 plus years later, Madden replicates NFL football so much. It's almost scary, it's almost too much. You almost get too immersed into Madden or a game of football because you have so many options. The enormity of it, that it is such a behemoth, that it is a thing that you have to coordinate. And when you play the game, I think that's what makes it so cool. Because back in the day, you had A, B, up, down, left, right, start, select. Well now, you get to actually see the offenses that these teams are running in real life. You get to select the plays you want your defense to be covered to. Where do you want that strong safety? You get to pick all this out. And that, I think, makes it A, challenging, but B, so much fun, because it's almost like you get to be the coach, and you get to be the player, and you get to do it the way the guys do on Sundays. And oh, by the way, since our technology is so amazing now and it's connected to the internet, you get to hop on a headset and play with your buddy who's in California and you're in New York. And that aspect of community, nationwide, globally, and the fact that the sport is kind of lending itself to a community type of game, I mean, it's a home run. I think that's why we've seen such rapid growth, not only in the game of football, but also in the video game side of it as well. Football provides a tremendously positive uh, activity and engagement for millions of people around. Madden itself really enhances their life. It brings new things that are very positive. And if you can combine that with social interactivity and building relationships with people that maybe you'll never actually see, I think all of that's great because that really affects people's lives in a positive way. What I've seen over the last four years in doing this is the amount of lives that this game touches. And you may think, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it really is a global game, and especially in America, it's a game that every kid plays. Not even kids, going up to 25, 30-year-olds that have come up and said how much they enjoy the game. And 
you see how many people are passionate and care about this game. And I think that's been the cool part that I didn't realize. The passion and the number of people that just want to talk about the game, just want to be a part of it. That's what's been really neat to see as I've continued to grow and progress these last four years of Behind the Microphone. For me, my whole life, games were always for a social purpose. I really didn't want to play by myself. I wanted to play with other people. And football is a very important part of our culture, you know, so to ha have it uh, steeped with all the meaning that it, that it has, uh, particularly here in America, that's a very powerful idea. That's always been a central thing about myself as a sports fan and what I wanted Madden to be.